Welcome to Gator Manufacturing's Manufacturing Technology Career of Tomorrow webinar series. Today is day three, and today we're going to be talking about quality. The buck stops here. You've already heard about Gator Machining and Manufacturing over the last couple days, um, but just as a reminder, in case you can't remember, we have been in business since 1962, and we are currently second generation family owned and the third generation is coming up alongside of us as we grow. Rockwell Collins was our first customer in 1962, and they remain one of our largest customers. Beyond machined and fabricated parts, we have secondary value-added manufacturing processes, including hardware installation and finishing. Today in our webinar, you will see get to see firsthand those hardware and finishing operations. We have a commitment to continuous improvement in both our production and in our workforce. A little bit of manufacturing by the number. Today, more than 6,000 manufacturers employ over 213,000 Iowans, which represents almost 14% of Iowa's total workforce. In Iowa, some of the world's leading companies currently engage, engage in the manufacture of food products, industrial chemicals, medical devices, plastics, recreational vehicles, steel, wood products, farm and construction machinery, fabricated metals, electronic devices, appliances, aluminum, and of course, aerospace and defense products like us. Median manufacturing salaries in Iowa are $61,427. What does this mean for you? What's your dream? Do you dream about owning your own home? Do you wanna have a boat to go out over to the river on the weekends? Maybe you wanna have a four-wheeler that you can go out and do some mudding out in the rivers and the woods. Or maybe you just want more Xbox games. Careers in manufacturing can help you get all of those things. At Gator, we provide tuition reimbursement for our employees. What that means is that we have employees that work for us, either part-time or full-time, and then we help pay for their education. Maybe they didn't know what they wanted to do when they graduated from high school. Maybe they just tried it, tried an educational path, and it just wasn't for them, so they went out and worked. Or maybe they just simply wanted to work and get more experience before they determined what they really wanted to do. We help our employees get their uh, edu continuing education through either Hawkeye or other two-year community college programs or a four-year degree through Upper Iowa, Iowa, or UNI. This is a huge benefit. Um, tuition is ex extremely expensive and it's not projected to be going down anytime soon. Tuition, if you go to school right out of high school and um, maybe you don't know what you want to do or just go out and have to get student loans, your student loan repayment schedule is almost like another house payment. Um, they can average between $300 and $500 and $800 a month, depending on how much you finance and how many student loans that you have, which is a pretty significant amount of debt. Working for Gator, a company like Gator that provides tuition reimbursement allows you to get a degree without debt. Today, we have with us Andy Rice. He is our quality manager. Uh, he is, was an independence graduate in the class of 2007. So welcome, Andy. Thanks, Amber. Um, yeah, as Amber said, I graduated independence in 2000, from Independence High School in 2007. Um, that summer, I actually started working on the shop floor here at Gators in the drill press area, um, helping with counter sinks and some other stuff. Um, I started school at Iowa State that fall um, for aerospace engineering, and I actually came back to Gators and worked that winter um, on the shop floor. Um, from that point, from that point on, I ended up working various jobs throughout the summers while I was while I was attending Iowa State. You know, I, I went to Texas and worked on water slides. I was an ice arena supervisor. I worked at baseball complexes and airports, uh, and I actually attended school year round a couple of years. In the summer of 2011, I interned at Gators. Um, this was technically my senior year. Yeah, I did have a super senior year at Iowa State. Um, but yeah, Gators offered me an internship and I, I started here and I wrote some programs from them. And I actually think a couple of those programs are still 
in use today. Um, I graduated from Iowa State in 2012, and then I called Gators asking for a job on the floor until I found a career path. And at that time, Gators was looking for manufacturing engineers. Um, so they asked me to apply, and I did, and they must have liked my internship because they hired me back on. Um, three months after being hired as a manufacturing engineer, I became the hardware department supervisor. Um, actually, the same month, I ended up getting my private pilot's license, the same month that they asked me to become the supervisor. Um, from there, I had been the hardware department supervisor until this this January, and we transitioned another person into my role, and I started my path into quality. And I went to, they sent me out to, Gator sent me out to California for training. It was about a week-long training to become an AS9100 lead auditor training. Um, and then just earlier this week, we made the announcement, and I accepted the position as the quality manager. So that's where we're at now. Um, quality is in everything we do. Um, if you think about anything that you're passionate about, whether it's athletics, music, um, manufacturing, building, whatever it is, um, if it's something you really like to do, you're going to try to find a way to do it very, very well. Um, you're going to notice your own imperfections. You're going to want to hit the note just right. You're going to want to, you're going to want to run a fast 440. Um, but it's, it's in everything you do. Um, so quality is continuously finding ways to improve. Um, you make changes, you monitor the changes, and then you, you evolve again from there. So it's an evolution, not a revolution. Um, a lot of people here tend to ask, you know, when, when do we stop pushing the limit on quality? Well, there's several different ways to answer that, and it's it's realistic answer is you don't. Um, if you're passionate about something, you're going to continuously find better things to do it. Sometimes technology limit us, limits us from making improvements. Sometimes it's cost. Sometimes it's not cost effective to make an improvement. And you just kind of wait it out until things do come up that allow you to, to make the improvement you want to make. Um, so what we have here, what we're going to see over the next few slides, are some, some areas within GMM that are kind of our secondary operations. Uh, what you see in front of you now is a, a CMM machine. It's called a coordinate measuring machine. This is one way that we measure quality at Gators. What you're going to see is the operator takes this probe, and the probe kind of guides throughout the part. Now, they're controlling this manually, but usually somebody pre-programs this machine before the parts arrive. And the probe will go down, and it actually takes measurements all throughout the part. Um, it'll measure holes, contours, edges. Um, it can actually rotate 90 degrees, and it can get those big, the big holes on the left-hand side. Um, it's a very accurate machine. Now, a lot of the products we make at Gators have dimensions of, you know, plus or minus five thousandths. Um, so, like your human hair is usually an average of three thousandths. So that's, you know, it's pretty tight tolerance. And everything that we're making is going into airplanes um, eventually or somewhere near an airplane. Um, so you don't really have a whole lot of room to make mistakes. And that's why we have to measure everything we do. Um, so that's kind of what you're seeing here is that probes running around. It's going to take its dimensions, it beeps, and what it's going to do at the very end when it's said and done, it's going to print out a report for the inspector, the technician that operates the machine, to review and tell them if it, if it found a bad dimension. Once that's done, the operator may double-check it using a different means, or they might rerun the program again just to verify that it is correct or the machine didn't screw up. If, if we do run across a bad part, we might have to actually scrap the entire part and start over. So that's, that's kind of a, a, good, a good example of one way we measure quality here at Gators. In this video, you're going to see our paint department, right, and, and what a painter does. Um, so at Gators, there's several things that go into this. All right, you, the parts have to be masked, which is what you're seeing in that green right there, and they're going to pull it out. So there's a masking on that part, and you're going to see it's marked last. There's actually last written on top of it. Every single first piece and last piece of a production run is, is checked to verify that things are, have gone correctly. Well, as these guys go through and paint the part, you're going to see he tries to keep a very specific pattern when he paints. The painters have to mix their own paint. They have to check it. They have to make sure there's no fish eyes, hooks, 
or orange peel or any splatter that isn't supposed to be where it's supposed to any, anywhere it's not supposed to be. Um, you know, so there's somebody, the whole process about this is somebody's got to put that green tape that you see on there, you know, and sometimes that green tape isn't what's used. The different materials that need to be used to prep a part can have a various effect when it actually comes to deprepping the part. So you got your prep technician that preps the part and mask them. You've got your painter, which is, which is what we're seeing now, they're painting the part, and the part might get various coats. You might have a, a base coat, uh, your top coat, which actually gives you your final color, and then you might have a clear coat on top of that or even a texture. Um, so all these painters need to know all this. The humidity comes into play, their chemical mixture of how they mix the paint, and then they actually have to go through and they use a, a gloss meter and, and other meters that tell them how thick the paint is. Like we said, with parts going into air, aircraft, they might be meeting up against other things where you know the one or two thousandths tolerance or paint thickness starts to build up and push other parts out of tons and they won't fit up correctly. Um, so after the painter's done, it'll go to deep prep and they will deep prep the part and they unmask it. So they take all that green tape off. Well, there's, there lies another problem. What if they chip the paint or it tears or, or they scratch the part on an accident? Those deep prep people need to know how to touch up the parts. They will actually double check the painters to make sure they didn't paint things too thickly. They double check the gloss, the texture, all that stuff as well. So that's essentially what all goes into the paint department. Um, but we also have a powder coat department here at Gators as well. So the powder coaters, the same process, except for instead of wet, wet spray, you're seeing a powder. It's like a cloud of dust that gets attracted to the part. You'll charge the powder coat with one, either a positive or negative charge, and you charge the part with an opposite charge, and it attracts it kind of like a magnet. So prep. Prep and deep prep for powder coat as well, and, and powder coat is a lot harder material, so you, you don't want to screw it up the first time. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of rework that goes into it. On this video here, we have someone installing hardware. Um, you know, when we were managing the hardware department, I think it was two years ago, I took an inventory to see how many different types of hardware we had. Uh, and I, at that time, there's over 5,000 5, different types of hardware. Now, Gators manufactures over, I think it was like 27,000 different part numbers. So the combinations are endless. What, what part gets what hardware, um, the hardware becomes different sizes. But what you're seeing here is a helicoil being installed. The helicoil is kind of like a little spring. Like 90% of the parts that we make at Gators are aluminum. And aluminum is soft, it's soft material. So if we screw something into aluminum, the, strip, the threads can strip pretty easily. Well, this helicoil, which is like a spring, it's stainless steel and it gets threaded in and it helps strengthen the part. Well, these guys need to make sure they install the hardware correctly by making sure they don't forget a hole um, because your thread diameter changes. But they also need to make sure it's into the correct depth. The helicoil is too deep, the mating screw might not meet the helicoil and therefore it might not fit the part. Um, so this part, I do believe, gets over 90, 90 helicoils in it, and they vary in sizes. Sometimes they're installed with primer, sometimes they're um, just put in blind like what he's doing. Um, sometimes they have to use alcohol as lubricant to install the helicoils. But this is just one, one aspect of the, you know, those 5,000 different types of hardware that go into it. Um, other things that our hardware technicians might do is they use presses. Um, to press fasteners into sheet metal material or machine material. Um, they'll use adhesives where they're, where they're gluing parts together. Um, and they use riveters and other, other types of fastening, specialty fast, fastening tools that allow them to install whatever they need to install. These guys also need to make sure they're, they're following dimensions as well. You can see right there, he's installing a heel goal pretty close to an edge. Well, he wants to make sure that tool doesn't ruin that edge or scratch it. You know, they're pretty passionate about their jobs. They want to make sure that everything looks good when they're all said and done. So hardware is a very vast area. Um, if you like working with your hands, hardware is a great spot. Um, the, the amount of jobs are endless. You're never going to be seeing the same thing twice in a day. Uh, the, the quantities we run at Gators are, are very small. Uh, average quantity size is about 100 parts. So if you're a good operator and you, you've got the respect of your team lead and they trust you, they might be running 10 or 12 different products in a day. Where 
the longest you're ever going to be on the same part doing the same operation is probably just one day. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of hardware in a nutshell. Visual inspection. All right, here's a, here's a area that's got a lot that goes into it, and uh, it doesn't appear that way because they, they sit at desk. That's usually what a lot of people think about people that sit at, sit at desk. They're not doing a whole lot. Um, but visual inspection, they're they're taking all of our, our written materials, all of our, our documented materials and uh, any other documents, and they're comparing them. They're making sure that we use the correct material. They're double-checking to make sure an operation wasn't missed. They're double-checking that an engineer didn't forget to put an operation on a work order. Um, they check to make sure that we issued the correct material to a work order. We don't want to make a part out of stainless steel material when it was supposed to be made out of aluminum. Um, so they're double-checking all that stuff. And then they might go through and they visually 100% all the parts looking for any sort of defect or anything that stands out, doesn't look correct. They might line their parts up against each other to, to, to find a piece of hardware that might have been put on the wrong side or, or something of those means. Um, so they're looking for any imperfections. After they get done with all their documents, they create certificates of conformances. And these are usually delivered to our customer and they, they tell our customer and they, they ensure to our customer that, hey, we've double checked everything, we put it all together, here's everything, all the material, who it came from, um, when it came into our shop, what lot numbers they are, um, and that, that goes to our customer for their verification. Everything that happens at Gators is, is tracked. Um, we can figure out who installed what, at what point in time, on what day of the year, and everything. And what happens if something goes wrong in an airplane, uh, the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, will rip apart whatever it was that happened, and they will track it back down to whatever a screw material was made out of and figure out who mixed that material that day to form that screw. And then we'll look at that person's process and make sure they didn't forget something. Um, so that's another reason why quality is so important is we have to make sure that all this stuff is done correctly. I think just recently there was a, a company called Kobe, Kobe Steel. Um, this is a big, big thing that's coming out and we're going through this process right now to ensure that we didn't purchase any of this material from Kobe Steel where they, uh, they manufactured parts, they took their paperwork and they, they might have fudged it. I'm not too sure what exactly happened, but they have non-conforming non steel made that might have been happening since 2007. So there might be airplanes out there that have this non-conforming steel in it that could ruin something. Um, so and it's a big recall. Um, so they're going through the processes of figuring out what all these parts are that might have this, this steel and, um, and removing it as soon as they can. Um, but that's another part of the visual inspection is they ensure that none of that paperwork is fudged. Um, other, other visual inspection areas are first article inspection where they take prototype parts or first run parts and they ensure that everything was done correctly. They generate another report that goes to our customers and there's also receiving inspection. So all this inspection happens at very various points of time. You get it, you have it happen when parts are received in. If we have somebody outside that manufactures some part of our process that gets checked. During process when we're manufacturing, each one of our operators, they check their own work. And then we have inspection points where that CMM was being run. And then we have the final inspection, which is where the visual inspection and first article happen. And they just double check everything. Um, we don't want to send bad parts. We, we take pride in what we do. We want to make sure that everything works the customer is supposed to and looks the way the customer wants it to look. Um, so that's the whole point of, of quality. So there are a number of careers available at Gator. You've seen things from a CNC machinist, We've talked to programmers this week. We've talked to our design engineer. We've learned a lot about quality today. And their opportunities truly are endless. And I truly believe that there are even positions that we don't have today that we will need in the future. If you think back to Tuesday's presentation when we were talking to Ben about design engineering and some of the research and development that he was doing, he showed us the um, showed us the robotic uh, press brake cell. And even 
as robotics come into manufacturing, we still need people to program those machines. We still need people to run those machines. The robots can't do everything. They can't uh, load their own new raw material. They can't take those boxes of completed uh, parts out of out themselves. So even with all of that, they're still going as robotics and and we make continue to make improvements in in manufacturing processes. There's still going to be lots of opportunities in careers. We need people to prep parts and deprep parts. Do you enjoy painting? Maybe you enjoy um, have a, a passion around art and can really take that and turn that into a career looking at um, doing that prep and deprep work, doing some really fine detail painting as things come off of the wet spray line. Maybe you have a passion for, for working with your hands and making things, um, for working with machines. That can easily translate into a career in our, with our CNC machining program or in our sheet metal department. The opportunities truly are endless. As promised, we are supporting your programs in the school. Teachers, it's your chance to take a look at that invitation that you received uh, with your packet of materials and look at the tail of the plane. And there is a classroom code on the tail of your plane. Today's classroom code is 9358. If you have 9358 on the tail of your plane, please send an email to studentoutreach at gator.com to claim your prize. You get to choose the $100 gift card of your choice. This is the last day of our webinar series, so we really appreciate you joining us. However, there is one more event that I am pleased to announce. Tomorrow, Friday, November 3rd, from 3 to 5, we will be hosting an open house at Gator. It's your chance to come in and see what we do in person. If you've enjoyed our webinar series, come check us out. We'd love to show you around and show you what we do here. The address is 901 12th Street Northeast in Independence. If you're unable to make it to our open house from 3 to 5, again, send an email to studentoutreach at gator.com, and we'd be happy to set up a separate time for you to come in and do a tour. Thank you again for joining our Manufacturing Technology Careers of Tomorrow webinar series. We really appreciate your time and attention that's given you've given to us. If you have questions or comments about the content, please don't hesitate to email us at studentoutreach at gator.com. We'll be happy to get back to you. Otherwise, enjoy your day and we hope you've enjoyed our webinar series.